Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Narcissa Nightshade and Mike Benyon Rowe. And that's the last time I go for anal bleaching at the dentist. <laughs> Oh, hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud with me, Narcissa Nightshade. What have you got for us today, Mike? Well, today I've got a story about gifts being delivered in an unusual way. Well, I don't know about you, Mike, but I love a gift being delivered in an unusual way. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us. The Cud.tv for our website. And on YouTube or podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. Do it now. <laughs> and as names of people who have reached out with their grubby little fingers and touched our souls go along the bottom of the screen, it's this week's Showbiz with Narcissa. <laughs> Well, I have been going through these grubby little tabloids oh, and fun. I've got some... Interesting stories for us this week. Okay. Um, now, this one I feel like I can relate to a little bit because, you know, we've just had the holidays mm -hmm. and I think we've all overindulged a little bit. I, I've been overindulging for the past four years. I know. <laughs> Every day is Christmas Day. Exactly. Bring me a cheese board. Pop a sprouted. Yes. Well, along those lines, mm. apparently Gemma Collins is scared to weigh herself after an exercise break due to an agonising injury. Oh, dear. She's watched herself on a TV show, hasn't she? She might have watched herself <laughs> on a TV show. Well, I think... Do you know what? I think the GC looks absolutely gorgeous there. Yeah. I think that's a lovely swimsuit picture. Um, from an unflattering angle as well, to be fair. I always think it's better to be taken from above. Mm, it, it's not from above, though, is it? It's from the side of I, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Still, I think she looks great. I mean, she's got a lovely shape and, mm -hmm. like, whatever shape and size you come, like, we all have these insecurities, don't we? We all are fearful of getting on the scales. I am dreading it. <laughs> we were just talking off camera about this, mm -hmm. actually, how I just gave up the gym for six months. And, uh, yeah, I've terrified myself into going back next week. It's very much needed. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't go. It's even easier. It is even easier. I think this is the thing, ultimately. We're now living in a, a day and age where we really just need to let go of it a little bit mm -hmm. and just accept that whatever's comfortable for people is comfortable for them. Yeah, I, th I think very much a case of I've, I've lost the window of being that, you know, Chris Hemsworth-esque kind of ripped. That's not me, ever. No. I'm, I'm built for comfort-ish, not for speed. And I think also sometimes, like... We have this idea in our head about what people perceive to be attractive. Mm -hmm. And yet everyone's idea of what's attractive is completely subjective and different. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think this is all down to kind of what feels good for you. Yeah. And we need to get this idea out of our head. Because I know I, I have this thing of like, I need to have, like be super slim. I mm -hmm. need washboard abs. I need to be toned, toned, toned. But I'm actually not even attracted to that. Okay. You know, it's it's just horses for courses. Why am mm -hmm. I trying to push myself to fit someone else's narrative? It's not good for you. Don't do it. It's not. I mean, she's bagged herself a man, at least. Yeah, good for her, because she's got engaged recently, hasn't mm -hmm. she? Gone to uh, Jerusalem, apparently, with her husband-to-be. Um, Is he on his tiptoes? He is, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I need to be taller than, than Gemma Collins. That's... I think he still would be. It's just... Mm. I mean, really, the co the comment here is, are we talking about fragile masculinity? Why? Well, I mean, like, why do you need to be taller than your missus? It's weird to me. I don't know. Mine's non-existent, so... There you go. <laughs> well, I was going to say, well, that's not true. He's eight inches tall. Um... <laughs> Mostly silicone. Right. Let's have a look then, shall we, mm. at some other showbiz news. Now, this one, I think... Potentially a little bit controversial. Ooh, I like controversy. Well, I like controversy. So we've now seen the first photographs from the Amy Winehouse biopic. OK. What are your thoughts on it? I'm sure it'll be good. I have mixed feelings on it. Okay. Um, like, I'm a huge Amy Winehouse fan. Mm -hmm. I, like, I really... Her music just really spoke to me on, like, a very different level. Like, she's mm. very much up there. You know, we talked about my, like, top five favourite albums. Like, I'd say both 
her first two are definitely both in my top five. Okay. Um, and I just hope that it's treated with the sensitivity that it deserves. Mm -hmm. um, because I think people are very much too quick now to, you know, let's really lean into the troubles that this person had and in a really insensitive way. Because I think, especially in the queer community, we all have a friend or more mm -hmm. than one friend that's dealt with substance abuse issues. Oh, yeah. And so I just hope that actually what they're trying to do here is show more of how she got there and, yeah. and a bit more about her talent. Her talent her and, troubles, yeah. and her troubles rather than, oh, let's let's get really gritty, let's show a dirty apartment with needles everywhere. Like I'm really hoping it's not that. I mean, is, is it giving Amy to me? I, I mean, for me, I don't know who the actress is. I've never heard of her before. I'm not big on that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But when I look at her, is there a resemblance other than the hair? I was say, it's the same hair. It's the same hair. So she's got a piercing thing done there. Yeah. Um, and she's wearing hoop earrings. It's a really bad wig as well, that. Yeah. Like, you can see how bad the fibre is on that. I say this in a £15 hard front. But... Um, <laughs> I, d I don't know, like, I don't necessarily think you have to look exactly like no. the person to play them, so long as it's played well. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. I don't want to, like, harp on too long about how the actress looks comparatively to Amy Winehouse. I just care more about how she's going to tell that story. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we look comparatively at uh, Judy, for example, mm -hmm. which I thought was an amazing biopic, Yeah. And I was, again, really worried about how they were going to handle those issues that she went through. Um, but I thought that Renee Zellweger did an amazing job with it. Yeah, I, I agree. And it was it was sensitively done. It was sensitively just... done. You saw the trauma that she went through. You didn't see much of the substance abuse. Mm -hmm. You just saw what happened. And yeah. I was especially happy that they didn't show her passing away. Mm -hmm. I was really glad that they didn't do that. So... Hopefully, hopefully they do the same. We're going to have the same thing for Amy. Yeah. Move on. Okay. Right. Okay. So now this one's a bit more light-hearted. Okay. Um. So I, maybe let's have a little guess. If we were going to guess as a celebrity, and they've worked in a UK fish and chip van, and nobody ever knew, who would you say it was? Hmm. Barbara Streisand. It's not Barbara Streisand. Okay. Definitely up there. I wouldn't say this person's the icon, but they're related to an icon. They're related to an icon. Works in a chippy. Jay-Z. No, it's not no. Jay-Z. We're actually talking about the recently departed Lisa Marie Presley. Ah. So apparently there was a, a time in which she um, moved to, I think it was Sussex. Okay. With her then husband, whoever that was. Was it, was it when she was married to Michael Jackson? It wasn't when she was married to Michael Jackson, no. Oh, dating Because I think at this point, Michael had passed away. Okay, so it's more so recent than that. It was somebody else who I haven't heard of. Her then husband, Michael Lockwood, they moved to Rotherfield, East Sussex. Okay. And they became friends with the owner of a chip, a chip van. I yeah, do. I've come many of friends with a chippy. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, what they had to say about it was she wasn't pretentious. She was just normal. She came in, put the hat on, drank a pint of Guinness and would barely laugh. <laughs> on Friday night, her and her son Ben said, can we come to the chip van? We want to serve. And apparently the customers didn't have a clue. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't have. I mean, well, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Everybody knows the name Lisa Marie Presley. Mm -hmm. I know pff, not much about her. I couldn't say much about... She's there with her dad and her mum. There you are. That's as much as I can tell. And you. I think you can see there already the trauma is deep. Yeah. Um, well, it's because she's just realised her mum's name's Priscilla. I know. But that's a fab name, though, isn't it? <laughs> for a movie, yes. For a movie, and yes. a musical, yes. Yeah. Mm, not so much for an actual person. Yeah, so, I mean... Can you see the appeal of working in the chip van? Depends if they're paying you in chips. That's a good point. That's a good point. Because it's like the people that work at McDonald's that get free food on their break and stuff. That's true. 
but then obviously we'd have to like scale back to you know our, our gym segment and i don't <laughs> yeah. think we need to go over that again no um yeah i mean good for her i mean if you want to work in a chip van work in a chip van no judgment here um i do th i don't know whether it's a slightly opportunistic and, and a nice market employee to bring up, oh, our friends died. She worked in our chip van once. You should visit our chip van. It's just on the side of the M62. Like, <laughs> I don't know what roads are in Sussex. The M62 doesn't go anywhere near Sussex. No, I know. Well, yeah, I get the point. I don't drive. Uh, <laughs> I'm driven. I just turn up places. Um, yeah, but then who's going to visit a chip van because Lisa and Marie Presley served chips there once? I don't know. Maybe some Mad Elvis fans. Yeah, maybe they're just caught in a trap, can't find a way out. It's a shame. It is. It is, but that's the end of the showbiz news. Well, thank you very much. Always nice to stick an Elvis reference in somewhere. You're welcome. But stick around as next, it's Mike with the buzz. <laughs> welcome back. You're watching Chew in the Cud with me, Narcissa, and Mike. Now let's get ready to get all spanking up to date with the buzz. Funny you should mention spanking, because oh. my first story is not about that at all. Um, do you wear a particular fragrance when you're going out? Um, I do actually, yes. Do you want to share that with that, or is it a closely guarded secret? It's a closely guarded secret, I'm afraid. Okay. See, I. I'm a massive fan of, of fragrances that nobody else wears. Same. So, like Davidoff Hot Water. Okay. No one's heard of it. It's £20 a bottle. It's a bargain, right? Um, but this is news about home bargains. Okay. Who have released a range of 99p body sprays. Right. Okay. Um, so, we're not talking an eau de parfum here? No. Oh, then I'm out. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not into an aerosol body spray? I'm not, no. But no. go on. Okay. Um, it's not Lynx Africa. Okay. Um, but people are saying they're basically copies of some very expensive um, okay. perfumes. So they, they claim to smell very similar to uh, Marc Jacobs' Daisy and Yseron Black Opium. Okay. Saying very, sm very similar smells. It's only 99p. Right. So people are rushing to um, home bargains to buy them because things like, you know, Daisy by Marc Jacobs is like £87. Right. So it's a bargain version. Okay. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's a body spray, so you're already out, but... Yeah, I'm already out. I mean, I've always been of the opinion, buy cheap, buy twice. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, it would be like, you know, buy cheap, buy 87 times. But I guess, like, it works for people who maybe don't have mm -hmm. the income to be able to afford that. And I think more power to you if, mm -hmm. if that's what you want. Great. I just question how often are you going to have to reapply it? I am a woman of means. Mm hmm well, that's how I like to portray myself. <laughs> so for me, I guess I would rather pay expensive once mm -hmm. and have it last a really long time. Yeah. But I guess it is just the markups on things are so ridiculous now from actually how much they pay to produce them. So it's yeah. kind of, for me, I'm kind of each to their own, but it's not for me. Not for you. No. Okay. I say I love a cheap smell. Um, as I said, you know, mine's £20 a bottle. That last three months. Yeah. I'm living it easy. Um, if they ever discontinue it, I'm screwed. So please don't discontinue it, whoever makes it. Dab it off. Um, so, yeah, so moving on from, from applying smells to your body. Okay. Okay. Um, gift sets at Christmas. Okay. <laughs> That's a nerve straight away, isn't it? Mm hmm. Go on. Do, do you get a particular gift set at Christmas? Yes. Now, um, oh, I know I can't say that. I don't think the person would ever be watching, but I can't say. Um, what my mother refers to it as. Um, but essentially, every year without mm -hmm. fail, it's not the worst one. It's like you say, it's not a Lynx Africa. Okay. Um, but every year I'll get, you know, like it's one of those like, like a little manly bathroom bag. Mm -hmm. And it's just like. Like a Nivea for men idea. That. It's Nivea for men. Every time. There's a lip balm in it. There's some body oh, wash a lip in balm. it. There's a lip balm in oh, it. Oh, well. I know, they thought about me, didn't they? <laughs> they, they bought the expensive one. <laughs> Nothing says I love you like <laughs> Nivea lip balm <laughs> in the bath bag. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. You see, I, I, get, I do get Lynx Africa mm -hmm. from a nephew every year. 
Without fail. Without fail. And I, I explained to him that it's, you know, borderline homophobic. I was um, going to say, does he know you're a homosexual? Yes, he does. Well, he's right. met me. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but now he's doing it just ironically. Right. Knowing that every year he'll buy me this and it ends up in the food bank. Yeah. On the way past. I think this is the thing, isn't it? Like, I've reached this point now where I've just started saying to people, don't buy me anything. Because I think there's just so much pressure now for people to spend money on things for people to say that they care when actually... Mm -hmm. The cash would be fine. Well, I don't even need the cash. <laughs> oh, OK. You know, I'm very, like, I very much this year for, for gifts, me and my family, we said, let's just not do gifts this year mm -hmm. and let's just give to charities that we care about or you can give to that charity on my behalf, I'll give on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And we actually had a much nicer Christmas because there wasn't endless opening of rubbish that mm. you've got from your, you know, a work colleague or someone that you've met maybe twice since 1992. It was just a much nicer Christmas. There was much more focus around, we get to spend some time together nice. and, you know, stuff ourselves stupid. That's what Christmas and is all about. get pissed. It's what the baby Jesus would have wanted. It's what the baby Jesus yes. wanted. <laughs> well, this is a story about a boyfriend who ad has admitted that he doesn't use any cleaning products on his body, he just uses water. Right, OK, I've heard about these people. Yes, um, dirty, I believe the phrase is. Mm. Um, he's, say he's saying that um, I don't need to use it, it's uh, expensive, it's just cosmetic injury, in injury, mm. industry. Um, and basically, that you can just use water. That's all you used to clean with back in the day. Yeah. Um, and basically, scientists have come over and gone, no, use soap, you dirty git. Yes. Because it emulsifies the dirt and it makes yeah. it easy to wash off. Um, that's how we, well, obviously, that's how we knew that we could kill off COVID. You know, you know wash your hands. Singing happy birthday twice. Yeah. Even when it wasn't your birthday. That's what I mean. I, yeah. I, I understand that some people like to live natural, but there's even natural cleaning products that you can use now. So, yeah. It, it just renders the question like, just. Why? Yeah, why? Just have a wash. Yeah. Have, have a, a bloody wash. wash. <laughs> Even if it's just pits and bits, have this a This is what I mean, like, yeah. I know they go, oh, well, back in the day, they only used to use water. Do you know what happened to them back in the day? They stank. I'm going to tell you. Number one, they stank. Number two, they all got the plague. <laughs> and then they died. So wash, kids. Did you know that they think, as a theory, mm. that the reason that the plague got so bad was because of the church condemning witchcraft? Mm-hmm. Because, obviously, what we now know is all these poor women that were put to death, unfairly, for learning about, you know, like, basic science and nature and cleaning the house mm -hmm. and whatnot, and they were condemned as witches. Well, a lot of these women kept cats because the cats got rid of the rats in their homes. Yep. So what apparently happened across Europe was there was a huge um, demonisation of cats you know, they're familiars, they're demons. Kill him. So they yep. got rid of all the cats. All the rats. All the rats came on the ships, and then that's how we got the plague. So, well, that's a theory of how we got the plague. It's a, th it's a theory of why it ran so rampant. Yeah. So, yeah. We're, we're not saying it's all the church's fault, but it might be. Um, well, and if you've got a rat or a cat or a cat in a hat, green eggs and ham, I've got old Dr. Zeus, why not share it with us? It's at the Could TV. Now it brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, I mentioned at the start about an ingenious way or a different way of giving gifts. Yes. Right. And you said you like a gift give, giving in an unusual way. Mm -hmm. What's the most unusual way you've been given a gift? Now, I mean, I, I'd say it's unusual, but actually I think people have probably got a gift this way too. Um, thankfully, this time I only got it orally. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's nice. It got cleared up quite quickly. Then. It got qu cleared up with a nice big injection in the backside. And, oh, you know, nice. Oh, it really um, wasn't, but that's how, that's how I tend to get mine. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, this is about someone who's dropping sweets for children at Children's Day. Oh, I don't know about this. From Go a helicopter. On. From a helicopter? Yeah. Um, is that safe? No, <laughs> is the answer. Um, so, <laughs> this is um, just outside of Bangkok. Okay. There were children enjoying a Children's Day. Yeah. And um, celebrate their National Children's Day. Okay. And basically they thought, we're going to share some sweets with the children. Yeah. And we're going to drop them. Okay. From a helicopter. 
Uh, <laughs> yes, lots of children were, were hit on the head by falling sweets. Okay. Caused quite a lot of injury. I can imagine. Um, as did the fact that the downdraft from the helicopter also collapsed half of the stadium. Oh, my goodness. And sent eight people into hospital. Wow. Did anyone die? No one died. Okay, well, that's good, at least. No one died. No one died. No one died. Um, but, yeah, lots of children hit on the head by falling sweets. Wow. Now, it's like they didn't do their science because everyone talks about that thing, you know, about don't drop a penny off the Eiffel Tower. I still want to do that. I know, so that, I know, that. I would love, <laughs> the, I love the idea of doing it, mm -hmm. but the actual reality of the fact that there's a penny gone through someone's head. Oh, no, I don't want to drop it on a person. Oh, I just want just to, want to throw, drop it. Yeah. I just want to drop it, see what happens. Right. Yeah. Well, have, what might happen is it might go through someone's head and kill them. We well, have people keeping them away. Can have police cordon or something. Okay. We'll, we'll plan it. You just it. want to drop the penny. I just want to see what happens with the penny. Okay. Maybe Blackpool Tower. The cause... penny drops. <laughs> <laughs> the the Air Force pilot. Yes. So someone that worked in the in the um, Air Forces mm -hmm. thought this would be a good idea. Okay. And the state also agreed. So the government went, yes, that's a brilliant idea. So we're going to sign off on throwing <laughs> confectionery at children. From a great height. We spend all this time <laughs> telling kids, don't eat sweets, it'll rot your teeth. Mm -hmm. And then the government signs off on, let's throw sweets at their head from, from above. Yeah. At from high velocity from yeah. a helicopter. <laughs> what could go wrong? A lot of children got injured and eight got taken to hospital. But there were no <laughs> cavities. There were no cavities. Well, we don't know. Well, we don't know. <laughs> don't know if there were any cavities. Maybe Casualties, one... but not cavities. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, that's all from the buzz this week. And now we're going to go for a quick break where I'm going to nip over to Home Bargains and buy myself some really cheap perfume. Stick around, as coming up, we've got our game of the week. Welcome back. You're watching Chew in the Cud. And this week we're playing Ooza Kazoo. And this one is for the ever ready. Well on his knees is Mike. So off your pop. Not on my knees right now. It's a change I know, but you know what I'm just saying. Game of the week. So I'm going to play a tune on the kazoo allegedly, and then Narcissa is going to try and guess what it is I'm doing. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if you know this about me. I'm not, I don't know much about music, um, considering I'm a drag queen, it's shocking. Um, I just make up things all the time and think it's what it is for years and it isn't those lyrics at all. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get at least one right. Okay, so we're setting the target at one. Yeah, we're going to set the target at one. So if you want to get on your knees and blow, I let's shall... jump on into it. <laughs> I know what it is. It's... Uh... Oh, it's... Oh! I've got two versions in my head. Um... You can have either one. Either one. Um, is it erasure, respect? It is indeed. Fab. It's actually the version I was doing as well. Oh, there we go. I was jumping between the two and I can't remember who did the other one. Was it a rock version that somebody did? Not sure. I'm trying to remember who it was. Was did. it... I want to say Wheatus. I want to say Wheatus as well, the people who did Teenage Dirtbag. Yeah, it was, yeah. Okay, next one. Can I get a bit more? <laughs> um. Oh, okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. It's Britney Spears. Uh -huh. Maybe one more time. It is indeed. Shall we do another one then? Yeah, come on, let's just jump in while I'm on a roll. While you're on a roll, okay. Um. Right, 
I'm going to be completely honest. Okay. I've got an idea in mind. Okay. And it's, I haven't got a clue. Okay. Um, it was uninvited by Alanis Morissette. Oh, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't have got that. No. And I love Alanis Morissette, but I wouldn't have got that. No. Are you saying that I was doing shit? I mean, yes. I think it's because it's not the version I think of. When I hear that song, I always think of, you know, was it Freemasons who did the remix? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that was much more when I first started going out in the clubs. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, Ed Sheeran. Although I will say that Jagged Little Pill is one of my favourite albums. It is. Well, you've already won me over. That's in spite of me. Head over feet. It was um, very good. Well done. Yes, well done me. <laughs> Power of Love. Um, but who sang it? I know a lot of people have sang it. Mm -hmm. um, well, except anybody that's done it. Oh, God. But I'm doing the original version. About someone going somewhere. About someone going somewhere? Yeah. Maybe called Frank, but more fun. Oh, um, did Frankie goes to Hollywood? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's there you oh. go. Um, okay. Mm. <laughs> I, nah, I'm out. I've, I've no idea. No, no clue whatsoever. It's the Kylie Minogue. Which one? He did it again. He did it again. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have had a clue. Okay. No. Okay. no. I'm trying to avoid all the, the, the... Although I have done some work as a Kylie impersonator, believe it or not. So, we, we spoke last time you were on about you doing Madonna. Yeah. And you've done Kylie. I've done Cher. You've done Cher. Uh, oh! Oh! <laughs> Wagon Wheel Watusi! <laughs> yeah, I've done Cher. Okay. Uh, Mariah Carey. Okay. I've done Joan Rivers. I've done... Who else have I done? Donatella Versace. Okay. I've done them all. Okay, done them all. <laughs> Share. Yep. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. Yes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, it didn't blow me wig off. Um, <laughs> I do not know. Am I going to kick myself? No, because it's me doing a kazoo. Um, the Pet Shop Boys, there's a hint. Uh, it was the Pet Shop Boys. Well, it, it wasn't It's a Sin. Nope. Um, I need to think of something. I, I should know better than this. Come on. Uh, what else? I, now all I've got in my head is Elton John singing It's a Sin. <laughs> okay. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. It's gone. Opportunities. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. Wouldn't have known. My heart is full of love and it's all for you. Oh, it's Bronsky Beat? Yep. Yes. There we go. We're not we're not going to do anything else, we're just saying the name of the artist, okay. Oh I said I said before, I sang like oh, is, oh hang on. Is it just called Don't Leave Me This Way? Yes. There you go. Okay. I was in my... I was playing the kazoo. I can't hear what's going on. Um, I even sang along. What more did you want? <laughs> I wanted to dance. I want an interpretive painting to happen at the same time. Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't ask so much. But... <laughs> 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 
Is it a him? No. No. Um. <laughs> oh, okay, it's the final countdown by Yora. It is indeed, yeah. Okay, apparently I know more about music than I thought. Yes, see. <laughs> Who would have thought? Okay, we've got. Yeah, two Go on, more let's in squee here. I could I could squeeze a couple more. Yeah, you can squeeze a couple more. Okay. Um. I mean, it feels like vaguely familiar. Uh huh. Is it uh huh? No, it's not. No, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a nice, nice try. Um, is it around that time? No. No. Is it more recent? It's it's mid to late nineties. Mid to late nineties. Can I get a bit more of it? Okay, I can. I can try it. <laughs> Starts off like that, and it goes. <laughs> Oh, I know what it is, but I don't know any of the lyrics. Okay. Is it that? I don't know who yeah, sings it, and it I don't know the name of the song. Okay, it's I Want You by Savage Garden. Oh, was that them? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I didn't know go. that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Do you know what song I always liked? Go on. Insatiable by Darren Hayes. Yes, but it's very high-pitched. I can't do that. Oh, I really like it, but it, it's because it takes me back to, you know, Kath and Kim and... Uh, <laughs> oh, Kel, what do you call that? Like, it's very... <laughs> it's unusual. Looking boy, looking boy, looking boy. Look boy. But I think that's gone on long enough now. Yes. After this quick break, it's Crafty Queens. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's that part of the show where Mike puts on a stylish beret as it's Crafty Queens. I think it's very stylish. Lovely. It's a choice. Um, so today we're going to do something with socks. With socks? With socks. We're going to make something called a sock monkey. Is that something to do with, like, you know, when you're a teenager? and you use a sock for something entirely different and then you leave it under the bed and then it, it grows. Um, what would you be using it for and leave it under the bed? Well, you know, teenage boys are a bit grubby, aren't they? And they like to leave some of their cells and oh, things in there. Oh, you mean a wank yeah. sock? Yeah, like a wank sock. Oh, right, no, no, it's but not But I wondered sock. if a sock monkey was what grew from a wank sock. You know, like sea <laughs> monkeys, but it's... Come monkeys. <laughs> Come monkeys. That's now a thing. Right, okay. Um, no, it's not. It's a cuddly little something to snuggle. Oh, that's oh, good. Lovely. That's right. nice. Um, so you should have a pair of socks. I okay. have some, some stylish yellow. Oh, well, I wanted green, so okay. I've got some lovely green ones here. Give them a good stretch. Yes. Yeah, and they're, they're clean as well, which is helpful. Yeah. I can I can actually confirm they are no, clean. Like, um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to we want to make the body and legs of a of a monkey. Okay. So we're going to take our first sock. Yes. And now where the where they're folded, like that, so you get the heel. Yep. You want to open it so you're going to to have it so it's like that, so the heel's okay, not flat. Okay. Right. And with your scissors, you're going to cut down the seam about halfway. Hang on, I just. So down the seam of the... Down the seam of the sock, so where it's fold, got the fold. Yeah, okay. I've got, yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. So you've got that kind of look. Okay, so not all the way down. Right, not let's jump on in. I hope these are left-handed scissors. Right, like about there. So yeah, about about there, so you've got, you've got some legs. Yeah, okay. 
Right, there we go. Okay, we've got some legs. Okay, now what we need to do is now we've cut it, we need to seal it. So we're going to seal it along the bottom. Yeah. And then the, the leg up to the crotch. Okay, and then we don't the have side. a sewing machine for this, do we? We don't. You have a glue gun. I have a glue gun. I have okay. solvent glue. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, I will say I'm a dab hand with the old... Uh, the glue gun. The glue gun, you know, but I'm actually, you know, actually competent with the sewing machine. So let's hope I don't burn myself because the last time it was quite horrific. But it's spot yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, well, we had to be oh, I was like, bloody spider webs already. <laughs> right. How clean is your house? I'm filthy. And then once you've done that, we need to turn the whole thing inside out. Oh my god. <laughs> right. Right, something's gone awry here. Oh, am I come out the wrong hole? We've got a, a hole where a hole ought to be, but not seen on a monkey. Come on. Get in there. Slowly but surely. Oh, good. We're getting there. Right, I'm going to use this pen. Right, that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay. That works. There you go. So now we need to stuff it. Are the legs meant to be sealed the whole way up? Yeah. Oh, shite. Right, okay. Oh, it's because it's popped open. That's okay. We're going to fix it. Bit of an emergency repair, yeah. Once, once you've done that, you just need to fill some, fill it with some of your wadding. So you just need to shove some... I beg your pardon. You need to shove some wadding into it. Or stuff it. No, no, I've just split its arse open. Oh, God, the wadding's coming out the arsehole. <laughs> my, my, mine's got a bit of a... a it's yeah. Mine's got a prolapse. Mine's got a huge prolapse. Mine's got a... I need to... Yeah, I mean... Semi firm. I'd I'd like quite a fat monkey. So I'm getting facetious comments about gardeners. I've used sellotape because the glue kept giving up. All right. <laughs> then you're going to seal your, the top end of your your body sock. I'm going to call it. Okay. Do you know what though? I'm just sat here going, oh, I could do this with a sewing machine so much faster. Right, so I'm sealing it with the glue gun. Sealing both up with the glue gun. Right, where's my other stick gone? Right, I need to shove this in the hole. <laughs> right. There we go. Gorgeous. Okay, now I need to... You've done that before. I have done that before. You learn a few tricks out on the streets, you see. Now, I don't know how I'm going to seal it without burning myself. That's it, gone. We need more. Oh, ah, ah, ah. oh my God! Okay. So once once you've recovered from from third degree burns from a glue gun, um, you just need to stick the the head on the body, like that, like that. The head's kind of on. It's attached to an extent. Okay. Um, and that's basically your monkey. You now just need to make arms out the other sock. Okay. Um. Or we don't have to. It can be an harmless monkey. I'll tell you what's not harmless. Bloody glue gun. No, hot glue guns are not safe. Yeah. Not fun. No. Um, but if you want to do this at home, you basically you cut two legs out like you did before. Stick it on the back, stuff it, done. Well, shall we? Let's get, shall we let's, give it a whirl? Let's give it a whirl. I'm going to give it a whirl. Okay. With, but I want to do it my way. You do it your way. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm doing it my way. Gone rogue, I believe the phrase is. Yes. Drag queens, we're, we're seldom known for, do, for doing what we're told. We just do it the way we want to do it. Yeah. Right, let me just get a whole fist in. I've said that before. I like to call it the dirty swan. <laughs> the dirty swan. <laughs> really nice and even. So I'm going for more of a sock gorilla. Okay. Like I wanted, like you know, to be a bit more top heavy. Okay. It's, sometimes life can be better when it's top heavy. Always better when it's top heavy. Although I often find in Manchester, it's it's not. 
It's not, it's very bottom heavy. Very bottom Manchester. heavy in Manchester. Yes. Or is it a... <laughs> right, I'm going in with some glue. Okay. Where I'm not going to burn myself. Because we're using, using solvent based yeah. glue now. Look at that. Look at this. Painful. Ooh. Awful. This is very... It's, yeah. That's the wrong hand. You're going to love this. Okay. <laughs> the glue's not w working very well for me, so I'm just I'm having to just think differently. I think the phrase is right. I know where I'm going with mine. You want to play a game? <laughs> I'm just using tape while the glue sets. I'm going to call him Big Daddy. <laughs> I'm sock Big Daddy. Yeah, I'm calling mine a mistake. Right, I've attached the arms. Okay. And that that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. Can I put eyes on it? If you want to put eyes on it, you can. My glue's not sticking. I'm not even going to bother with eyes. Well, I'm nearly done with the glue. Do you want the glue when I'm done? I've got glue. It's just not working for me. Right, I'm just is not... it? Yeah. Oh, there were sticky back bits on the... I'm just going to shove the eyes on. So, well, 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 someone finishes putting eyes and features on their sock monkey. Remember, if you can't get any peen or any vagine, you could always be a crafty queen. So, have you named your, your creation? Yeah, this is Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Okay, I, I've just made a yellow. It shouldn't really exist. It's got a gape. Look, mine actually does look it like... It does, yeah. Uh, Monkey, but I gave it gorilla arms. Yeah. One very big arm. It's, it's got it's, a very a, a very it's weak leg. leg day. Yeah, skipped <laughs> one, skipped one leg day. Yeah. Trained one. But this is Big Daddy. Yeah. Mine's just an accident. Oh, it's crying hot glue. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I can have hours of fun with that. Lovely. Well, I mean, yeah. I've I really enjoyed making Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'd be in a rush to do it again. again. Yeah. Definitely not with a hot glue gun. But that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And, of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing The Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.